Hey, it's Ryan from Ryanet, and today we're going to do an instructional video on screen printing with Green Galaxy's new colored water-based inks. We have Pitch Black, Mars Red, and Neptune Blue. Now, these labels not only look sweet, but the inks work awesome. So in this tutorial, we're going to walk through actually screen printing those. We're going to cover mesh, different print applications on light and dark garments. Now, these inks to start off with are a semi-transparent ink. So they're semi-opaque, they're not completely transparent. They do have nice bright color as you can see in the container, but they're not opaque inks, meaning that if you print them on a dark garment without doing a white underbase, they're not going to show up super well. So you have a couple different options for printing them on dark garments. One, you can use Comet White as the underbase. Comet White printed through like a 110 to a 160 mesh screen, and then flashed and then overprint this with like a 230 mesh. This works very nice on top of Comet White. The other option that you can add, which is not going to be quite as bright as printing on top of a white base, is printing with a discharge clear underbase. So you discharge out the underbase and then you overprint the color. This ink works great for that. Now we're actually going to be not doing any underbase printing today. We're just going to be going directly onto fabric. So we're going to talk about mesh. Now, this is the National Screen Printing Day design winner, Nick Crouch from Dynamic Designs. We're going to actually print his design using the Mars Red Green Galaxy ink on a fairly dark gray shirt. So we're using a 160 mesh. Now, this ink can be printed through a 160 to a 305, maybe even a little bit higher mesh than that, even a 330. The ink works very nicely in the screen. It doesn't dry very fast, so as long as you keep a healthy amount of ink in the screen, it works nice. What we'll do here is first we'll load the ink, and we're going to load it a little differently than we would load a plastisol. We're going to put a little bit more ink on the screen. That way we can leave the screen nice and flooded. So we're going to put a healthy amount of ink below the image, and then we're going to flood the screen before we print it. So that's probably a good amount of ink right there. Now, the 160 mesh, 156 mesh screen does take a lot of ink. So you, when you flood the screen like that, you don't want to press the ink into the screen. One thing to watch out for is you don't want ink to suck through your mesh. If your ink is actually falling through your mesh, that means your mesh is too low. Now that we flooded our screen, our ink is wet in the screen and won't dry very quickly in the screen mesh. We don't want to leave the mesh open for too long open mesh like this that has just been printed through because that, that ink will start to dry in that. Now speaking of mesh and emulsion, we do want to use a water resistant emulsion. This is water based ink. Just like discharge, you want to use a water resistant emulsion and maybe even an emulsion hardener, which is a hardener that locks the screen into place or post expose on top of that. So you want to make a hard stencil because if you don't, it will start to break down. Now if you're only doing a few shirts, it'll probably be okay, but the harder your stencil is, the longer it will last in production. Now you can either push or pull this ink. Today I'm actually going to be pushing this ink. I like to pull common white, but I prefer to push this ink because I can push down and then flood up, push down and then flood up. It's kind of a natural motion for me. So I'm going to take the ink, it's already flooded in the screen, and then just push back. So you can either flood with the screen in the down position, very, very soft flood, or you can lift the screen up. If you have a proper amount of off contact, flooding in the down position is often better. Now if you notice, I'm actually going to do two passes. A lot of times with water-based ink, you want to do two passes. A, you're using higher mesh, and B, it releases that water into the garment a little bit better when you do two passes. If you use low me enough mesh, you can accomplish it in one pass, but typically two passes will work out a little bit better. So there's two passes there. Now we flood the screen up, leave the screen flooded like so and then see the design on the garment. So that's what it looks like on a little bit darker garment with two passes, no flash. If we want it a little bit brighter, we can do a flash. Now keep in mind, this is a transparent ink, so this is not going to be a bright red. You're going to get more of a distressed look going on darker garments, but sometimes that looks pretty cool. Now let's do one print on top. Many times on top of the underbase, whether you're going a white underbase or a discharge underbase, you don't need to do multiple prints, only on the first print to the garment. I think it looks pretty darn good. So with our green galaxy colored inks, you can experiment going on darker garments with or without using an underbase. Now notice, after I'm done printing, our screen is flooded. If we have a healthy amount of ink in the flood position, not driven into the screen mesh, it will stay wet if we're doing a Jodge changeover, if we have to go to the bathroom or something. So now that we're done, let's talk about curing. So our shirt's printed. Water-based ink does take longer to cure than plastisol ink. Now you have a couple different options with that. One is if you're just a flash dryer user, you can use a flash dryer. It does take a while and it will smoke. So if you notice as this ink goes underneath the flash dryer, 
it does smoke and it's not smoke really, it's just the water evaporating out of the ink. Also, if you're doing it with a flash dryer, you always want to take it off the palette. You don't want to let it set stuck onto the palette. So this is a quartz flash dryer which does a little bit faster, hotter job. Optimally, you'd want an airflow flash dryer like the one that we have behind us here. This is a Riley Hopkins airflow flash dryer. It does a much better job than just radiant heat, whether it's IR or quartz flash dryer or a conveyor dryer. All right, now that we're cured, this garment is ready for wear. Now this ink does need to cure at 320, 330 degrees through the entire layer of ink. So the more ink that you have on the shirt, the longer it takes to cure. Once again, forced air flash dryers and conveyor dryers work best for curing ink. Dwell time, weather, no matter what you're curing with, typically is 90, to, 90 seconds to 120 seconds. So there is a way, if you have just a flash dryer or just a normal IR dryer as far as conveyor, you can speed that up. You can use a product called Warp Drive. Warp Drive is a low cure additive that actually helps the ink cure at a lower temperature. So if your ink doesn't cure all the way, it will still stay fast in your shirt during washing. Warp Drive does need to stay in the product for 48 hours before a wash, and you want to be very careful using it. So watch for videos on Warp Drive specifically, but I did want to mention that in this tutorial. Now we're going to print some Neptune Blue on a lighter gray garment. So we saw printing through a darker garment. One thing I really like about this ink is how easy it is to clean up. With a simple rag, um, just a little bit of water or moisture, you can clean up whether it's an ink knife or the screen itself. So Neptune Blue, we're actually going to print through a higher mesh because it's going on a lighter garment. So we're going to go on a 230 mesh here. Lighter garment equals higher mesh, less ink needed. If you use less ink, it's way easier to print, way easier to cure, and you don't waste money on ink. So once again, we load the screen in the up position and we're going to print back on this print. We're going to do two passes. We're going to do a load or a flood. Now here's a good example of flooding. We don't have quite enough ink on this screen right here to leave it flooded. So we would want to use a little bit more ink in going in produ into production. So now let's check it out. There it is, nice and opaque covers great even on not 100% true white garment. So Green Galaxy Neptune Blue works great. This is going to feel nice and soft. It's also going to be opaque. It's not going to wash out over time. A lot of times water-based inks, because they're, they don't have any opacity, they're very transparent, you'll see the fibers come through the shirt very quickly. This ink stays more on top of the garment like a plastisol versus a water-based transparent ink that sits in the garment and then fades relatively quickly. So it's kind of got a hybrid characteristic somewhere between water-based and plastisol, giving you the best of both worlds while printing. All right, when you're done printing for the day, the Green Galaxy inks are very, very simple to clean up. First of all, we want to leave the screen with all the ink at the bottom so we can take that ink out very simply. So we're going to do one final push right there and leave all the ink at the bottom of the mesh. That makes it super easy to clean up and scoop back into the container. Green Galaxy inks are very simple to clean up. We can either use EnviroSol, which is a water-based degradant, or simply water to rinse them off the screen and the squeegee. Hey, if you're looking for a water-based ink that's easy to use, eco-friendly, and looks great and feels great on that garment, check out Green Galaxy's new color water-based inks available exclusively from Ryanet. Thanks a lot for watching, screen printers. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more awesome screen printing videos. Have a great day.